Guys, this is it. This is the side-by-side in-depth comparison of Garmin LiveScope and the new Lowrance Active Target. Full transparency, I have no association with either of these brands. Uh, I'm putting them head to head and we're gonna run through a number of tests and see see who comes out on top. I think regardless who comes out on top, I think any of this technology is gonna revolutionize the way you ice fish and you will learn so much about fish activity and behavior. I think even, even if one comes out ahead of the other, I think uh, th there's maybe factors beyond this that'll help you make the decision, which could be mapping. It could be, you know, what, what you're familiar with. But anyways, we're gonna fire up these two units. I'm gonna dial in the settings as close as I can and we're gonna run through a series of tests. Lawrence has the ability to screen record to my phone. This Garmin Echo Map does not have the ability. Um, so I thought, you know what, just to keep it fair, sometimes maybe running it to the screen could cause some lag. So no screen recording, everything's recording on the FS5. First unit we're firing up is the Echo Map Ultra 106 SV uh, with the LiveScope module. Um, LiveScope is like the second generation of what was originally called Panoptics. And then Lowrance Active Target is the second generation of what they called LiveSight. Um, here we go, firing up the Garmin first. It's firing both up. So one thing I, I do wanna say before we get too deep into this is this is not a normal situation, having two units side by side with that sort of interference. Typically, if I was fishing here, um, there would just be one unit, we could be sharing it. One thing I should note is the firmware was just updated on both of these units last night. Uh, when I did my uh, active target first impressions, the firmware was not the most current. So take that into account. We've got these both on the amber type color palette. Guys, so a couple of things we're gonna test today is we're gonna test the response time. I'm gonna jig right between these two and this hole right in the middle, and we're gonna see which one has more of a leg. That's why screen recording is so important because if you're recording to your phone, you can't tell how much delay there is. So we're gonna be looking at the footage off of this camera side by side, jigging in the middle, and we will see which one has more delay. We're gonna look at the general clarity between the two. One to the other, is one cleaner? Does it have less interference, feedback, whatever, obviously, running these side by side isn't the best situation, but we'll turn them off and see if that changes just so we can take note of that. Another thing is distance. How far away can you see objects? How far away can you see fish? We'll do some tests with that as well. So at the end of this video, we're gonna end it off in the shop. I'm gonna go over, you know, the price differences, maybe what's included in some, not included in the other, some of those other specs. But for now, I just wanna see straight up performance, one versus the other. I'm gonna run through all the settings right now just to show you things are on the exact same, and then we'll start doing some tests. All right, so starting on the Garmin here, we're gonna go into the menu. Um, we are on down view for both of these. Gain 57%, range 20 degrees, uh, sonar setup. We've got TVG on low. Uh, essentially what TVG is, it's like uh, time variance gain, time varied gain. I don't know what it stands for, but I know what it does and it keeps your gain, it kind of spreads it out rather than it being really strong below your hole. It kind of lessens the gain below you and it gives you more of an even spread. Typically I keep TVG on low. I, I I haven't played with it, but noise reject, I'm keeping on high for both of them. So we got noise rejection on high, TVG on low. We've got the most similar color palette, uh, 20 foot range right now. This is on 20 foot range. All right, next let's look at the settings here on Lowrance. You've got down range, 20 feet, contrast 57 or 51. So we can bump that up to 57 to be the same. Uh, one thing I will note is the Lowrance doesn't have uh, a TVG setting. The, the two things you can adjust in Lowrance is noise and contrast. On the Garmin, it's called gain, TVG, and then noise reject. So there's, there's one more option there. Uh, once again, I'm not an expert on these things, so I might be missing it. But anyways, thanks. everything's set up. We've got noise rejection on high, and there you go. So before even dropping a lure down, I think it's it's pretty clear to see. There's a pretty big ring on Lowrance. That's what I see with rocky bottoms. We're on a muddy bottom right now, so I'm actually kind of surprised to see that. And then just a lot of general flickering. So what I wanna do right now is I'm gonna turn the Garmin off and see if that flickering goes away because that could be interference or that could just be how the unit works. So let's, let's turn the Garmin off to see. Because as I mentioned, it's not gonna be typical to have two of these. So as I turn that Garmin off, you can see that it, it, all those pulsing waves that were on the Lowrance is gone. Obviously that ring is still there, that didn't change, but it did It did certainly clean things up. We're gonna turn it back on here. All right, first thing I'm gonna test now is just the delay. I have a Bondi bait rigged up here without any hooks, and we're just gonna jig it up and down, and we're gonna see if there's a delay difference between the two, and this might be uh, a very minute difference, but let's give it a shot. We gotta wait for the garment to fire up. All right, this is where we're dropping down. A big, old Bondi bait, uh, no hooks on it. So a couple things I'm gonna be watching, just general clarity and then as well seeing if there's a delay. So, I mean, I think seeing this Bondi bait down there um, is probably similar to the size of, you know, a crappie, 10, 12 inch crappie. All right, let's let it swing back. That's the problem is that it swings up and down. So I'm gonna drop it down. Let's see if there's a delay. 
Yeah. So right away, I'm noticing there's definitely a delay issue. We'll, we'll do this a couple times. You can see my rod tip probably through the front of the screen as well. I'm gonna zoom in on both screens just to show a real, a tight frame of each lure going up and down, just so we can get the best indication possible. All right guys, we're doing the side by side here. Keep in mind there will be a little extra interference with, uh, with both units running. I'm just gonna yo-yo it up and down a couple times. All right guys, well I think that was a pretty clear indication. Let's just turn the Garmin off one more time. I just wanna see if this flickering goes away on the lower ants. You can see the bottom shifting a little bit. I didn't know if that'd be something that'd be changed with the firmware update, but it seems to still do that shifting on the bottom. Okay, it's cleaned things up, but it's still doing that shifting a little bit. I would assume that's something that'll get fixed by the firmware. So there, I just wanted to show you guys again with the other unit off what that looks like. All right, guys, before we do the distance test, right now we're just looking at general clarity on down view. Um, I mean, make the decision for yourself. So another thing on, on the clarity topic is I'm not seeing as much stitching here and there the stitching. I mean, you can see the stitching too. So it's it's tough to say, but uh, I would I would give it to, to LiveScope on the stitching side of things. There's a fish sliding in again. Brandon, come over here. Say hi to the camera. This is Brandon. He's gonna be helping us out. Yeah, he's gonna go outside of the shack drill, hold 40 feet away, 60 feet, 100 feet, whatever. And we're gonna just try a couple different distances, put both of these on forward facing mode. So right now we've been playing with down mode. There's forward facing mode, and then there's also scout mode, which is called perspective mode on Garmin, which is when you turn it sideways. I don't think there's a ton of applications for that nice fishing. So we're not gonna worry about that right now. There is a fish dropping, swimming by right now. Um, so once I catch this fish, we're gonna do uh, a distance test and see how the clarity looks at distance. All right, just for reference, here's the shack, Brandon. Go a little bit further. I'd say, Joe, your first hole right there. That's probably about 25, 30 feet. Deploy the bondy bait. I would say drop it down like halfway. We're headed back in the shack. All right, so we got to tilt, change both of these transducers. Now we need to switch it to forward mode. Click, click. Now it's in forward mode. I'm going to kind of aim approximately for that target. So right now, you can see this handle on here. Whichever way this points, that's the direction the transducer is pointing. So we're gonna do a quick pan and see if we can find it. Oh, I think I found it. Yeah, so we can see Brandon here. So as you can see, the TVG is kind of just changing right what's below. So we can we can keep the TVG off. So right now, playing with the gain, I mean, I can, I can drop it down quite a bit and you can still see that spec there. I mean, if I was doing a pan right now, see, I missed it. So you still gotta be, pretty bang on so right there there it is at 30 feet I, I like to have my gain a little bit higher and on the verge of having you know a, a bit of mess because then those fish just stick out a little bit more we're gonna switch this beauty to forward mode as you can see now this part needs to be flat well, if you can see that all right this part needs to be flat so now I'm gonna change this from down mode to forward mode so our forward range is 40 let's make sure it's the same as the other one let's put our gain at 62 to match it up all right, there it is. All right, so there it is side by side. I uh, pr pretty comparable right now. I yeah, I would probably say that active target is a, is a touch sharper. Uh, there's just you can see a little more interference there at the bottom and in the middle. We're going to turn this graph off and then we're going to get the cleanest image possible on the active target. All right, there you have it. Jig up and down a little bit, Brandon. That's pretty clear, guys. That's that's good. That's uh yeah, that's between 25 and 30 feet right there. Okay, Brandon, let's uh, let's double the distance. Deploy the Bondi. All right, going back to the shack. All right, guys, next test. We are at about 70 feet now, and we've located it on the active target. As you saw, Brandon is sitting outside. Uh, let's turn the, maybe turn the contrast, contrast up a little bit. I'm gonna just, I'm always messing with the angles to see how to get that best line. So right there, you can see the fish at about 70 feet. It's kind of flickering in and out. You got to think that's the size of a crappie. So you, you would be seeing that crappie or a bass 70 feet away right there, which is pretty dang impressive. So we turn the noise rejection off. We're marking it nice. I think taking the noise rejection off helps. Now let's turn 
the live scope on. Wow, the interference is significantly worse this time. Maybe it's just because it's shooting further away. Look at the interference on the Florence <laughs> right now. All right, so that was zoomed out to 80. So we're gonna change our range to 80 feet on this side. And let's uh, let's turn this off too. I'm struggling to find it. Well guys, as you can see, I think active targets the winner for distance. You can see the flickering there, but it is definitely sharper sharper at yeah 80 70 feet and and that's kind of the size fish right a bass is going to show up bigger we don't really have a i thought that bondi bait would be a pretty good size target right obviously if you're looking for something bigger like a lake trout or a muskie it's going to be a little easier to find and it might show up better on the live scope but as far as the distance test goes yeah i, I think it's i think it's active target right, we're going to try one more further a little deeper all right we're trying 100 feet now well guys once you got to like 80 100 kind of that range it's pretty tough to pick up a target but I would say that the active target has the edge in this. We had a tough time finding that, finding that bait in, you know, at 70 feet away and, and the active target was definitely the winner. All right, I'm gonna change things back to the down angle for a bit. Guys, one thing I wanna say about that distance test, I think that that is like, of all the things we're testing, that's probably the thing that I care about the most out of all of them is seeing fish at a distance, right? If it's a little muddier underneath me, that's okay. But if, if I can see fish at 80 feet, 100 feet, that's the difference between you know going over and checking that area out if you're drilling for crappies and the, the pods 80 feet away i mean i want every edge i can get to see them a little bit further away so definitely something to take into account there's a fish there's coming a fish. in fish are we rolling we're rolling look at that oh, oh, look at this. Oh. got him that's a big fish that was so cool oh, oh. i hope he doesn't oh he just oh. got the tip up uh -oh. oh my goodness oh my goodness. well that was cool all right, we're hooked up. First fish on the old jigging stick. <laughs> this is a pike. I am 99.9% .9 sure. So it could very well just, could lose this spoon very soon, or it could just pop off, who knows. Uh-oh, I just saw that move a bit. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 he's off. Nope. Nope, nope. Oof. Oof. That was a team effort. May as well pull the other one out yeah. too. Too much gear. <laughs> oh my. Oh no, he's in here too. Oh wow, we should have lost this fish so many times. He must be hooked pretty good. <laughs> we should have lost this fish so many times. We've had tip up soaking all day and now we may get the biggest pike on a dainty little jigging spoon. Oh, those are big head shakes. Oh, I don't like that. Just want to show you off, we're not gonna eat ya. He's close, I think we're at the leader. Yeah, we're at the leader. Ooh, that's Ooh. a big head shake. Oh, that's a big head shake. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we were close. Oh, just cutting circles at the bottom. That's oh, a nice pike. Not giant. Not giant. Okay. Probably a 30, 35 incher. Kind of the good fighting size. Come on, just slide back a bit. Well, that's, that's a good pike. Maybe bigger than I thought. Nice. We got her. Nice. All right, here we go. Let's open the bale. A <laughs> little dinner bell, doesn't it? That's a nice pike. There Ooh. you go. <laughs> we saw him on the active target and on the live scope. That's awesome. And he liked the dinner bell. He came in so aggressive. That is how you want to hook one if you're going to land it on walleye gear. Right on the snoot. All right, look at that fatty. Sliding back down. That was a complete rodeo. You can be on my face. Wow, that was a complete disaster. Got tangled in that line, got tangled in that line. Didn't have like a, obviously a still leader on. It it got tangled in the tip up for a second. That was cool, that was cool. We moved out deeper. We didn't really talk about that. We moved our entire setup out deeper. We wanted to run some tests again, out a little deeper, a little rockier. And uh, that was like instantly, we got us a decent pike. All right guys, uh, another thing I just wanna play with is, yeah, put it on forward mode for both of these and just do a scan and kind of see how rocks look, how the clarity looks and all that stuff. So we're keeping it in forward mode. We're not looking for anything specific right now. I just wanna see, you know, how it compares. So let's set both of them to 60 feet. Let's see what we can do here. So I'm just gonna do a little spin of the area, see what we're dealing with. All right guys, so now we're shooting 80 feet away. You can see the boulders on each. I mean, they both have pretty similar clarity. I, I don't really know which one I'd give it to. Um, now yeah, let's do some more spinning. So I mean, after doing some spinning and kind of looking at 
both of them point in the same direction here. Let's get them both point to the same direction. I mean, yeah, you can see the same boulders. There, there might be better definition there, and you know, it could be angles, but I, I think the definition might be a touch better at a distance. Like it's dirtier overall on the active target, but I, I feel like it's got a little more definition there. And you can see there's just a little bit of, a little bit of muckiness down there, so it's, it's tough to say. All right, we should switch it back to down for a little bit. I think there's a fish right under you. Oh yeah, look at that big fish rising up. Look at this. Look at this big mark coming off the bottom. Are we rolling? We're rolling, look at this. It's a decent sized fish. Come on, come on. Yes, that was sweet. I'm thinking walleye. Beauty, that was cool. Look at that, he's missing part of his dorsal. <laughs> Prime time has just started and hopefully we get a couple more fish. We're, uh, so our big camera died. We're now gonna use the screen recording functionality to the Lowrance and I'm gonna use a, a GoPro to film the screen here. Uh, so there will be a bit of glare. Uh, there's a fish underneath us right now. So I'm trying to get this set up as quickly as possible. Okay, you're gonna be fishing that middle hole. Once that screen pops back to normal, then you're good. Look, there's just a fish. There's three walleyes waiting down there right now. Okay, you're good. Right. Oh my goodness. This is video games. There's three, four walleyes down there. <laughs> Ridiculous. That's insane. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh. I think you're free. Okay, fish is still on. Nice Walter. Awesome. Oh my goodness, there's fish coming out of the woodworks. <laughs> Brown's on fire! Goodness. Man, there's just fish wait, ouch, oh. waiting oh. down there right now. There's a big fish coming over the tip-up bait. Wow, this is insane. Did he hit it already? Yeah, I think so. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's a bigger fish, dude. Oh, there's a bigger fish. He's coming back. Yeah, he's gonna eat right now. <laughs> How many chances will he get? I'm trying to eat him up a bit. Oh, look at this bigger one coming in. Bigger fish coming in. Oh, there's two. Oh, he's gonna crush it. There we nice. Go. And there's another one waiting there for you. Walleye action like this in the long time. Fast. Oh, there's another one. This one's gonna eat. Oh, jerked it right out of his mouth. Here we go. Here we go. Yep. Nice. Oh yeah. That's a little better. A little better. Nice walleye. Biggest one. Maybe. Oh wow. Ooh, wow. Whoa. 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 <laughs> there are so many fish down there right now. I want to watch them on both screens. This is overwhelming. Here we go. Here we go. There is a fish. Calm down. What? Oh my goodness. Come on. Got him. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Nice old Walter. Oh my. There's a little one in front of him. Eat it. Oh my goodness. Eat it. Like you're about to get bit. Eat it. Oh! <laughs> if you are looking for some entertainment on Instagram, follow Brandon Byler. He's looking for a single Mennonite woman. <laughs> Does she need to be a Mennonite? No. <laughs> okay. Brandon and I both got some Mennonite roots and we just connected together in Kenora. It's just, it's a miracle. Oh, baby. Turn up for it. Yes. Keep yes. On. Ladies and gentlemen, he is on! Oh, well, everything's frozen. Just lift it. Oh, nice one! He's coming up there! Oh. Nice. Nice, Walter. Going right back. Keep fishing, we'll keep packing. Oh, that one got scared away. This one's gonna eat. 
Ooh! So much side by side goodness. There we go. Wow, this is insane. Sweet. This is my favorite dinner bell I get asked all the time. Peach Glow 316. No minnow, no bait. Ooh, that's a nice one. Come on. He's coming to the tip up pretty fast. I kind of found it on the bottom. Yeah, he's coming back. Oh my goodness. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Can you, if a fish comes in, just try to wait till that clears? Yep. Oh, geez. Oh, oh, oh. Shoot. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Can you just please wait and uh, don't let that fish fight? <laughs> Probably the best person ever for not fishing if the camera isn't rolling is Aaron Weeb. I remember so many times filming and there would be like fish loaded on the graph or whatever, ice fishing. And he'd be like, Jay, is the camera 100% ready? Cause he's like, I do not <laughs> want to drop down and catch this fish. And that just, that just shows you how much he cares about making a good video, right? It's like, yeah, something. Oh, here comes a fish. Streaking in. Oh, oh my goodness. That's a nice mark. Are you gonna, gonna catch him? him? I'm just gonna let him chase me up. Ooh, that's, oh! He heard me. <laughs> he definitely heard me. Oh my goodness. Oh my oh. goodness. <laughs> he came out of nowhere. Man, oh, he nipped it. That's a bigger fish. That is a bigger 100%. fish. 100%. Come on. Yep. Nice. There we go. Nice, that looks, that, I don't know. Unless it was just, because we're super zoomed in. Yeah. But. Nope, nope. It isn't that big. Looks are so deceiving. <laughs> Walleye. As you can see, our light is fading. Brandon's gonna keep fishing until I'm done cleaning up. There he comes. Eat it. There he goes. Ooh. There's another fish under the hole right now. Okay. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is going on? Wow. So aggressive. It's right above you, bud. Oh, he's coming. Eat it. He's pointed up at it. Oh! Did it just break? No. The only thing was just frozen. So nothing broke on that hook set? No, nothing broke. There's still a lure. There's still a lure. Wow. We're all good. <laughs> oh my, he's coming. There's a different one. Wow. Scared. Oh, that's a fat one. Battery's about to die, guys. We got to end this because we're on our last battery. Well, awesome day with Brandon on the ice. We're going to see you in the shop for some concluding thoughts on Active Target versus Live Scope. Ooh. All right, guys, we are back. That was that was super cool to have so many fish interactions that we could share on camera with you guys to, to show the side by side. There's a couple things I want to talk about. Um, the first thing. Um, that someone might call me out on is um, the side-by-side -side screen there. The reason why I cropped the individual frames out is because I wanted to make both of them the same size. Since one was a 10-inch screen, one was a 7-inch screen, I had to, uh, you know, crop them both, make them bigger. So in those delay tests, that was the exact speed, both shot from the same screen. Um, if I would have kept it all as is on the same frame, then you would have seen that. It just wouldn't have been, um, you know, filling the frame as nicely. But just in general, I, th this isn't you would never use two units like that side by side. So as far as the interference goes, uh, the active target had a lot more interference. That's something you probably won't be dealing with because if you're ever dealing with multiple people fishing off the same unit, you're you're just using that one unit, right? Um, maybe if you're in a, in a crowded area, you might get you know feedback from from another unit, but in general, um, that wasn't an issue. But let's let's kind of go over some of the some of the speaking points, some of the tests, general clarity, and just quality of image. Uh, the Lowrance, and I think this will get updated with firmware because the thing about LiveScope is LiveScope is, is more developed. Obviously this technology is, Garmin's a couple years ahead. Um, so I feel like the Garmin is, you know, a couple firmware updates ahead and the Lowrance is, it could get there and could fix some of those issues that were most noticeable. The entire screen shifting, that wasn't an interference issue. That was just something within their system, some sort of bug where the whole screen just shifted. And then as well, that ring was really noticeable, but I've seen other active target footage where there was no ring at all. So I'm not sure if that was something specific to my unit 
or uh, something that's gonna get fixed in firmware, but it, it did make it look real muddy. As far as the actual image um, near the bottom, uh, as you can see, the live scope was a lot cleaner overall. Um, in, at a distance, I think when you got further away, it was it was tougher to, to call which one was better. Um, and that kind of leads me into the next topic being the range and finding objects at range. We dropped that bondy bait down uh, at 30 feet. Didn't make too much of a difference. Once we went to like 60 to 100 feet, um, it was definitely easier to find it with the active target and it was just cleaner at a distance. So I, I think that's one of the most important things on this entire test is finding images or is finding objects at a distance because that's how you're gonna find, you're gonna find fish, you're gonna find rock piles, all that stuff. So I think that's very important, but then you go back to the general clarity and quality, especially with the closer stuff and, and you can see that the Garmin was a lot cleaner. Um, as far as the delay goes, you saw me jigging up and down the same time. Live scope one hands down in that category. I think that one's fairly important. Like, if, uh, you know, I think if you're if you're jigging, um, it gives you a little more time to react when you can see that fish. If there's a little more of a delay, you might not have that same reaction time. So obviously the delay, I, I think, has some importance and that one goes to um, goes to the live scope. And then we and then we're kind of on to some of the other specs. And this is probably one of the biggest ones that I didn't do a test on. So both of the transducers are 135 degrees this way, whatever way you want to call that. But the difference is active target is 18 degrees and live scope is 20 degrees. So that's that that could be a lot depending on how deep you're fishing. That isn't something I tested, but that's something to take into account. I mean, if you're, you would think if it's 18 degrees, it should be a, a clear image when that fish is in that cone, but 20 degrees, you're gonna pick up more. So I don't know, that's something that I would need to play with more to see if I notice that 18 to 20 degree shift. I'm not sure. And then we got, you know, other features. Um, I, I'm gonna give you guys the cheapest options to get this active imaging on both Lowrance and Garmin. On the Lowrance side of things, it's the FS7. That is the cheapest unit you can get the active target on. You're looking at $650 US and that is with no transducer. So that's the cheapest, 650. Garmin is the 73 CV and that one comes with a transducer. You, not, you cannot buy it without a transducer. That one is also 650 US dollars. So both 650, Garmin comes with a 2 deducer, which might be nicer for deeper water. Um, Lowrance has the screen recording capabilities built in. So for someone like me, being able to record to my screen is amazing, not having to worry about a GoPro and that other stuff. To get that in Garmin, you need to be on the uh, GPS map series, which is significantly more expensive. So it depends. I don't think a lot of people, the screen recording is super important for me. It's incredibly important. That being said, I've been using uh, GoPros to record my, my echo map screen and that's been fine. But aside from the units, those are both 650 US dollars. Then you've got the actual uh, active target and live scope bundles. Those are both 1500 US dollars. The one difference there, uh, the Lowrance one comes with their scout mount. Garmin does not come with a perspective mount. It's that mount to turn your transducer sideways to do that that other orientation, something that I, I don't think has a lot of use through the ice, but I know open water, there's more usage for it. So if you buy the Lowrance version, it comes included. If you buy the Garmin version, it does not. And it's an extra, I think, $100. So yeah, guys, you're looking at $2150 US dollars um, for both of those kits I described um, with Lowrance you're gonna get uh, the scout mount with the Garmin one, you're gonna get a 2D transducer. So in the end, it all kind of balances out. I mean, I think if mapping or screen recording is important, it might sway you one way or the other. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess you guys wanna hear my, my final thoughts, my final verdict, and you're gonna be like, oh Jay, this is such a generic answer, but like any of this live imaging technology is gonna change the way you fish, change the way you learn about fishing. Um, I think both of these are incredible products. Um, I think if I had to go buy one, I would buy the Live Scope. I just think it's it feels a little more robust because it's 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 been developed for a few more years. That being said, if Lowrance you know upgrades uh, a few things on their firmware, they already have I, the win on the distance categories. So it's it's not a landslide winner. I think I I love seeing the cleaner image on the Garmin, but either one's gonna blow your mind if you get it. Uh, they're an investment, like I said, 2150 US dollars. 
Well, guys, hopefully that side-by-side -side comparison help, will maybe help you make a decision or at least some clarity on the topic. Uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully doing the same thing with Hummingbird Live when it comes out shortly. If someone wants to lend me a unit to do that, I would gladly take them up on that offer. But yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, concerns, things I missed that I should cover in the next one, please comment them below. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will catch you, well, the ice season's almost done. We might catch you in a boat very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys.